Three years ago, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk boldly predicted that United Launch Alliance ULA would be dead as a doornail. Now it appears his prophecy is coming to fruition. The company that once dominated the entire aerospace industry is facing the risk of disappearing from this field. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. ULA, the joint venture formed by Boeing and Lockheed in 2006, has historically earned profits. But as rival space launchers, from Blue Origin to Firefly Airspace to Rocket Lab to, most famously of all, SpaceX, have begun competing with it, those profits have been dwindling. According to data from S&P Global Market Intelligence, Lockheed Martin's space division, the closest proxy for measuring profitability at privately held ULA because it shares that business's profits, has seen its operating profit margins erode from 12.6% in 2015, the first year SpaceX received U.S. Air Force certification to launch national security missions, to just 8.8% last year. Meanwhile, Boeing's Defense, Space, and Security Division a somewhat worse proxy because it's not purely a space business, earned a 9.8% operating profit margin in 2015, but suffered a $3.5 billion loss last year. This indeed makes perfect sense for Boeing and Lockheed to decisively decide to sell ULA like this. And this is also a reason why the future of ULA is getting darker than ever. Why do I say that? As you already know, the potential acquisition of United Launch Alliance ULA by Blue Origin has sparked considerable debate within the spaceflight industry, with some observers heralding it as the birth of a formidable challenger to SpaceX's dominance. Proponents of this view argue that the merger of Blue Origin and ULA would create a combined organization capable of giving Elon Musk SpaceX a run for its money. They envision a revitalized competitive landscape in which two heavyweight players vie for supremacy in space exploration. However, a counterargument challenges this optimistic look, suggesting that rather than fostering competition, this acquisition would effectively eliminate a key player from the market. Under this perspective, Blue Origin's move to acquire ULA is seen not as the emergence of a new competitor, but as the removal of an existing one. By absorbing ULA, Blue Origin would consolidate its position in the industry leaving fewer options for customers and stifling innovation by reducing the number of players in the field. Among these differing viewpoints, let's take a look at the facts. While the acquisition may offer Blue Origin access to ULA's established infrastructure and expertise, it may not necessarily result in significant strategic advantages. Both companies possess overlapping capabilities, particularly in the realm of launch vehicles, which could dilute the potential benefits of the merger. Thus, the extent to which Blue Origin can leverage ULA's assets to enhance its own operations remains a subject of scrutiny. Alongside this is the specter of job losses in the industry, which could result from the consolidation and streamlining of operations following Blue Origin's acquisition of ULA. The displacement of skilled workers, technicians, and engineers could have far-reaching socioeconomic implications, exacerbating unemployment and disrupting communities dependent on the space industry for livelihoods. Furthermore, the acquisition may lead to reduced competition within the spaceflight industry as the consolidation of Blue Origin and ULA diminishes the number of players in the market. This could result in decreased choice for customers and potentially higher prices, stifling innovation and impeding progress in space exploration endeavors. So, why couldn't ULA avoid this tragic outcome? Why didn't they develop reusable rockets sooner than SpaceX or Blue Origin? It all boils down to the skewed mindset of ULA's senior officials. To be honest, ULA engineers have been researching rocket part reuse for many years. Even before SpaceX successfully recovered any boosters, some ULA engineers authored a white paper comparing SpaceX's flyback technology to engine recovery. But at the time, ULA held a monopoly on launch contracts from the U.S. government, which provided them with substantial revenue and little incentive to pursue the commercial launch market. Under the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle, EELV, contract, ULA received payment up front each year for pre-purchased boosters and additional charges for the launch services. This arrangement ensured a steady income stream for ULA as boosters were built and launched as per the government schedule. The Delta IV heavy production line remained active until the first half of 2023 due to prepaid government orders, reflecting the favorable terms of the contract. ULA's primary focus was on maintaining favor with Congress, the entity responsible for appropriating funds for government contracts. To achieve this, ULA engaged in practices such as campaign donations and widespread employment across various congressional districts. 
However, this decentralized production approach increased the overall cost of launch vehicles. The introduction of reusable vehicles would have disrupted ULA's established business model and potentially reduced profits. Reusable technology implied a decrease in number of boosters needed, leading to fewer jobs and less influence with Congress. Consequently, ULA had little incentive to pursue reusable technology, as it posed a threat to their financial stability and political leverage. However, the market changes have come swiftly, and ULA faces challenges in pursuing reusable boosters primarily due to SpaceX's significant lead in this arena. SpaceX's successful implementation of the flyback method for booster recovery has established itself as the most effective and economical approach to reusability. ULA's Vulcan design, however, is ill-suited for flyback recovery due to its configuration and engine capabilities. The Vulcan's two engines cannot replicate the varying thrust levels required for a flyback operation, unlike SpaceX's highly throttleable Merlin engines. In the absence of the flyback method, ULA must explore alternative technologies for booster recovery. That concept is called the Sensible Modular Autonomous Return Technology Module, or SMART. In the SMART approach, the engine module will separate from the Vulcan's first stage and deploy an inflatable aerodynamic decelerator to slow it down, based on technology developed at NASA. A parachute would later slow down the engines, allowing for mid-air capture. However, their current plan to reuse engines falls short of the economic benefits associated with reusing the entire first stage. This approach mainly benefits ULA by reducing engine purchases from Blue Origin without significant impact on their first stage production lines. But forget about this method, because if ULA falls in the hands of Blue Origin, they'll never use Vulcan with engine reusability capability, as the new Glenn rocket can do it better. Moreover, for reusable launch vehicles to be economically viable, a company must conduct frequent launches. SpaceX has achieved this by offering low-cost launches, thereby capturing a significant portion of the commercial market. ULA's entrance into the reusable launch vehicle market will require them to compete with SpaceX's prices, a daunting task given SpaceX's established position. Thus, ULA may struggle to garner enough business to make reusable vehicles economically viable. ULA has now reached a dead end, with no other option but to hope that the acquiring company can help them to thrive rather than bury them. A once dominant player in the aerospace industry, ULA is on the verge of getting forgotten. Relive a beautiful memory of ULA. Since the United Launch Alliance was established, they were able to benefit from the rocket technology and lessons learned since the 1950s with a combined history of the Delta and Atlas rockets. The joint venture company has boasted an impressive launch record from the get-go rather than having to learn expensive and explosive lessons like so many of the new space startups we've seen over the past decade or so. In fact, ULA points out that their success is at least partially founded on a heritage of more than 600 Atlas program launches and nearly 60 years of Delta launch experience. ULA is justifiably proud of its ability to successfully and reliably launch its rockets, claiming to be the nation's most experienced space launch company with more than 150 consecutive launches and a 100% mission success rate. The company says its rockets have placed more than $70 billion worth of satellite assets into orbit at this point. But in the fast-moving world of aerospace, you can't rely on legacy launch technology or tasty contracts forever. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.